Welcome back. In the last episode, we figured out how to make the car move on the ground. If you missed that adventure, the link to that video is in the description. The next logical step in this journey is to try to get the car to fly. I don't want to just build a quadcopter with wheels, because that would be lame, and it's probably been done before. I want to build a vehicle that can drive, with its flight gear suppressed, and then, when the need for flight arises, will transform into an aerial vehicle. To pull this off, will require more electronics. And the most direct and efficient way I'm envisioning of this being possible is with four flying apparatus located at each corner of the vehicle that are either recessed or hidden and only apply thrust when activated. Of course, this means a lot of soldering. Like, a lot. With the electronic speed controller soldered up, I needed a way to integrate them into the car and deliver each with the power it would need to drive its motor. My very mech-y approach to doing this was to slot the individual ring terminals of each ESC onto a bolt, clamp down on that bolt with a nut to help ensure contact, and then drown the connection in solder, making a big ball of metal conductance. It'll probably work, right? My first attempt to achieve thrust was already going swimmingly. The 3D prints were struggling, and my assembly tolerances were off. The design, however, was brilliant and was sure to work first try. I mean, how hard can it be? As the fan spins, it should pull in air and then aggressively shoot it out the lower nozzle to create thrust. I mean, the physics are there. The slanted propellers will create a negative pressure area behind them, pulling in air, and then compress and push the air in front of them circumferentially until it can be thrown out of the nozzle. In practice, we get this noisy guy. Overconfident and riddled with excitement, I printed the remaining three blowers, and then testing went off without a hitch. I think I fixed it. Nope. Okay, for real this time. RC leaf blower, anyone? No? Okay. Let's fix this monstrosity. Let's try something more traditional that still fits my goal. Let's have more traditional propellers that can be flipped out using servos to the aerial takeoff position. Have I mentioned how much I love 3D printers? They really make disappointing myself quickly very achievable. Let's assemble this and give it a shot. What's the worst that can happen? Visible oscillation and structural resonance. That's not great. All the vibrations also cause the swing arm to adhere to the top cross brace. It does appear that servos aren't necessary to lift the props though, which makes this cooler and conveniently lighter. Let's make the props bigger, because we obviously needed more thrust. We should probably also increase the structural integrity so this thing doesn't shake itself to bits. Unfortunately, to make the props bigger, they need to overlap. Maximizing the size gives about 40% overlap, which according to someone on the internet's independent study, will give me very little loss in thrust at the cost of 30% extra vibration and noise. Good thing I don't live in a place with neighbors on pretty much every side of me. The bigger props just graze the carpet, which is not something I'm super worried about at the moment, so I'll just tape them in the upright position. I promise this won't devolve into a quadcopter with wheels. I promise. Props can't do it, so let's outsource this to the professionals. Oops.
Hey, that counts, right? If it can flip, it can probably fly, right? Let's make sure the transition still works. Okay, good. Now let's clean up the electronics and get rid of this breadboard to make it lighter. This much lighter, if you were wondering. Let's also solder up a gyroscope and program that. The car now knows its roll, pitch, and yaw. That should come in handy. Let's double check that all the rewiring didn't break anything. Cool. Now let's employ my bud Dan for some cameraman help. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta do horizontal. Nathan, stop being so tall. <laughs> you don't need to get me in it. I only care about the drone. Good sound. Alright. button works. <laughs> <laughs> Programming mode bad. Turn off. <laughs> Turn back on. <clears throat> Reconnect. Connect it. <laughs> Flying mode. Oh god. Initialize. <laughs> Sound. <laughs> Ready for the real good sounds? Default. Question. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> so something about... I think that side just didn't initialize. There we go. Okay. We're, fine. We're not concerned about that? Nope. <laughs> Now, this side is defaulted higher, which is what we want. Yep. Now, in it, up, 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 up. So I one... Pu I pushed it right back. One thing that might make the things uneven is that the left side tilts more horizontal. What? I know. I have... Just keep going. I'll tell you later. When it crashes. So instead of continuing to try to get this failing design to work, let's just take what we learned and begin to optimize upon it. The new design is a third of a pound lighter, better centers the weight between the props, and streamlines where the electronics go. I originally wanted the body to be plexiglass, because I thought that'd be cool. But apparently my blue laser on my laser cutter can't really cut plexiglass. So I switched over to some thin birch plywood instead. Since the body is a large flat plate, laser cutting is far better and a far faster manufacturing method than 3D printing would be. So with all those parts printed, laser cut, and assembled, we can get back to trying to defy gravity.
Despite my injuries, I carry on testing. You have queen. Oh my god. <laughs> Where's the other half? <laughs> I tried programming changes, I tried trimming methods, I even tried to make it autonomous using only the gyroscope, which didn't work at all. A hop here, a flip there, some lift of one side occasionally, just failure after failure after failure. Things broke, parts flew off. What you are seeing is just segments and snippets of each of the hours upon hours of testing I performed. Heck, I even smoked out my power switch and had to replace it. I did get this satisfying jump though. I then bought an ESC programming card and was finally able to tweak settings which seemed to let me gain some altitude. had to be getting close, right? Did I really spend all these months to not get anything off the ground? This was the highest the car had gotten off the ground, and the current draw fried some of the electronics. I'm getting decent lift distribution. Please, please, just get off the ground. Is that... You're almost there. Come on. Please, please, just go up. That was so close. Perhaps I just need more space. No, it, it's fine. Go, go ahead, scratch the leaf of my table. Failure, 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 oh hey look, N no, failure, might as well give up, see you all next time, eh, maybe one more try. Startup is good. a little. Let's compensate. Yes. Yes. Mom, get the camera. Can we do it again? We can sustain flight longer than that. Just gotta trim it a little bit. And... Come on. There we go. If that isn't flight, I don't know what is. Just look at it. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Here's a take where I put the controller in frame so you can see the trimming process and everything I have to go through to get these things off the ground. To make it easier, I tried to log everything to the computer but couldn't get all the communication channels to work at once, so back to manual. Can I do a liftoff and a landing twice in one charge? There we go! Well, with that, we have figured out both driving and flight. They obviously still need some work and need to be tested as a system together. That's what the coming months are for. Subscribe so you don't miss it. See ya!